Yeah, I'm a paleo climate modeler. So uh, for this wonderful conference. Um, so what can we learn from the Earth? So the lesson of uh, modeling the Earth's glacial cycle for exoplanet simulation. I mean, the number one thing is um, we talked about yesterday, the model validation. A well-validated uh, model produces reliable exoplanet simulation. And then um, the <coughs> There, uh, there are abrupt glacial inception with very tiny gradual orbital changes. That basically means that the threshold behavior and nonlinearity and internal variability might be uh, much more common than we want to deal with. And then we know there are glacial interglacial cycle on Earth. So, uh, uh, in addition to uh, equilibrium simulation, we we probably need to uh, start to run some trend and exoplanet simulation with uh, uh, time-varying changes of uh, forcing, like a processional <laughs> of liquidity forcing. So this is Earth's recent uh, climate history. And um, so we have uh, interglacial, and we have glacial. And right now we are at <coughs> interglacial, so it's even more habitable than if we are in the glacial. And uh, then uh, I want to introduce, this is uh, called the, the last deglaciation from 21,000 to 6,000 years ago. That's the time when we get out of the glacial uh, period. And then there is this, uh, uh, the last glacial inception. So it's about 120,000 to 110,000 110, years ago. Um, so uh, I just want to point out that uh, actually the glacial inception can be very abrupt. So the kind of a common uh, idea is that the, it takes a long time to, to build a glacier. Actually, it's not. It can be really fast. So this is the uh, change of the glacial, uh, the land glacier uh, uh, from uh, the last, uh, since the last glacial maximum. So the height of the land glacier uh, ice sheet could be like three miles. And this is a, a, a kind of a synthesis for what we know about the, the last deglaciation. So we have a very gradual change of insulation. And then this is the CO2 um, increased by about 100 ppm. Uh, during the last deglaciation, sea level increased by about 120 meters. Greenland temperature is very wild, and the Antarctic temperature uh, kind of increased. Uh, then I want, uh, there the so this is the ocean heat transport in the Atlantic. We call it the Atlantic Meridian Overturning Circulation, and um, I will show you uh, it, it, it affects the climate dramatically. But first, I want to point out the abrupt climate change during uh, some of the deglacial period is really large. So this is uh, the so-called Little Ice Age, very tiny, and this is uh, a really large abrupt climate change. And uh, so this is uh, so when the AMOC was sh shut down, actually the Greenland temperature uh, can be really that. That's the reason we get the abrupt climate change. Okay, so model validation. So uh, what, what, what does that mean? Uh, for me, it's reproducing climate history with a cor corresponding uh, climatic forcing. So like this one. So uh, this is the black is the observation and the red is the model with the corresponding climatic forcing. It's pretty good. I mean, to me, that shows the model has its uh, merits. So then, can we do a little bit longer? This is only 100 years. Can we do glacial and glacial cycle? So this is the large project. That's the project member. And uh, what we use for that is the NCAR CCSM3. It's about 10-year-old model. And uh, it's, uh, the resolution is very similar to a Rocky 3D. And uh, so the boundary condition, so it, uh, so Earth's orbital variation, greenhouse gases, uh, the ice sheets and uh, the AMOC. So I want to emphasize that uh, for, model, for model validation, we don't tune the model. We basically just use the same model for RPCC and put on the boundary condition. And uh, this is the, the boundary condition, insulation, CO2, ice sheets, and then uh, the, the AMOC. 
uh, here. So this is what we get. Actually, uh, uh, the AMOC change can actually reproduce the abrupt green line temperature change from the ice core. And uh, this is a very similar graph like this one. So basically, this is the observed global mean temperature. This is the simulation, so very similar. And uh, we also uh, tested that this uh, uh, sh uh, shape, this increase due to CO2 forcing. And we also show actually the not only northern hemisphere, we also produce very good southern hemisphere temperature. So this is the model validation with the best record from S core. So two Greenland S core, uh, four Antarctic S core, and then the black is, is the data, the red is simulation. So it, it's pretty good. So summary for this one is a, a low resolution global climate uh, climate model with objective boundary condition can replicate global and hemispheric climate evolution of the last essay termination. So basically this climate model is quite reliable for past and future climate simulation. The second thing I want to emphasize is uh, from this exercise, so CO2 and AMOC are the major climate forcing uh, during the last deglaciation. Okay, so last glacial inception. So the synthesis paper showed that the, time, the onset is uh, about 121,000 years ago. And this is the kind of a show. This is the forcing. CO2 actually doesn't change. This is the June insulation. It changed very large. It's much larger than the change during our current Holocene, current <coughs> glacial. So sea level drop about 30 to 40 meters. Temperature drop about 10 degrees. Uh, North Atlantic surface temperature also drop about 5 degrees. Antarctic temperature drop about six degrees, almost half of the glacial and glacial amplitude. And uh, so actually that's it's really hard if you just look at this, thinking about CO2 and, uh, and uh, AMOC are the major driver. But uh, here, because the sea level actually drops, we don't have melting water to slow down AMOC. So basically the two major drivers are basically constant, it could not produce abrupt glacial inception. So what do we have? Basically, we only have this. So can the model produce the glacial inception with only the solar forcing? Um, so this is the basically a similar model. We just put on the, the boundary condition. So here, it's uh, for the deglaciation, we started from 140,000 years ago and uh, Stop at 110,000 years ago. So during the, the deglaciation, it's the, the all four climatic forcing similar to the last deglaciation. But for the last in the glacial and the glacial inception, the only thing we have is solar and uh, greenhouse gas. And we showed actually greenhouse gas actually is more or less constant. So basically, the major forcing is the solar forcing. So this is the just show again, this is the climatic forcing. That's the time for glacial inception. CO2 doesn't change before that. So the only change is this um, solar forcing. And this is our simulation results. So basically, uh, this is the, uh, basically the snow height, snow depth in the northern hemisphere high latitude, kind of a proxy for, uh, for kind of a glacier because we don't have dynamic glacier in this model yet. So this is deglaciation, then uh, during deglaciation, the snow melts. Then last in the glacial is almost flat. So basically it's like Holocene right now. But uh, at uh, this time, actually, we, we, we started to, to build snow height. So basically, the, this simulation actually produced the, uh, can produce last glacial inception. Then is the timing right? Actually, it is. So more or less at 121,000 years ago. Um, then if we look at the abrupt change, this is the uh, northern hemisphere, basically high latitude temperature. And uh, the abrupt change during glacial inception actually lags by about 2,500 years at about 118.5 uh, thousand years ago. And uh, if we check the, the sea ice, uh, that's the sea ice. Actually, it's also uh, there are dramatic dramatic increase of sea ice at this time, 118.5 thousand years ago, and we check the AMOC. Actually, 
the solar force alone actually produce large drop of a mod. Okay, so let's uh, find out what's happening for this solar force of last glacial inception. So what happened is uh, so at uh, so between like uh, after one hundred twenty five thousand years ago, the the with the reduction of the solar summer solar insula insulation, and there are fast exp expansion of terrestrial snow. So this is one twenty two thousand years ago, one twenty one and one twenty. So it started uh, in the Eurasian area, and then that's the start of the the the, uh, the onset of the the build of the snow. Then this snow actually uh, started to convert into the North Atlantic region, and that's the reason it take about twenty five hundred years to cover to reach the 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 region surrounding uh, North Atlantic that will actually produce. Uh, the sea ice increase, and this sea ice increase and uh, coupled with the uh, AMOG actually produce this uh, dramatic cooling uh, over the the northern hemisphere high latitude. Basically, that that's how uh, we get the, the the yeah we get the 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 abrupt change uh, uh, during the glacial inception. Yeah. So this is the last slide. So basically, that's what I want to convey in this talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have time for a couple of questions. Yeah. You, you said that a monk has uh, boundary conditions. So I'm surprised about this. Uh, uh, it's because the, the carbon model can calculate the amount. Yeah. So yeah, that that's a great question. And uh, because uh, it's like CO two, I mean, we cannot produce CO two. We have to prescribe CO two. So similar to AMOG, we cannot produce AMOG uh, because we don't know what control the change of AMOG during the last deglaciation. Nobody knows right now. We don't know. It's it's there is a huge debate. It's a, uh, uh, it's the iceberg uh, called it or, or, or the AMO called the iceberg. So so yeah, that that still confusing. So you say you have dynamic vegetation, um, but you saw a lag in some of the responses to things like sea ice and and the snow buildup. How does the vegetation respond um, to the the changes you were seeing? Does it change on a delayed time or? Does it change kind of more gradually throughout the the glaciation? Yeah, I believe uh, uh, it it mostly provide a positive feedback in in the high in the mid to high latitude. Yes. Uh, 